coming in this year, January. I break my pelvis the week of Oakland. The doctor's like, dude, don't walk on it for a month. I remember calling my parents, I'm like, well, I'm done. Like, and it's contract year. I was like, so I'm, I just wasted all this. I don't really see a sport that's like it, to be honest with you. You're just so in that moment, I don't think anything else really matters. Start from the beginning. I grew up in Bakersfield, California. When you're there, there's not much to do besides some type of motorsport. Growing up, my dad raced quads, and uh, I got into quads and raced flat track kind of growing up. I'd say early childhood until I was about five, and then uh, got a motorcycle, and from there, I parked the quad and just started racing motorcycles, and then obviously it grew from there. This is the first bike I went to, or not went to Loretta's, but one at Loretta's, and that was the second bike. I always told my dad I was gonna keep a Walt. Um, but then it ended up happening. And then there was my first quad. Just cool to have a little bit of memorabilia from way back in the day. We did the Bounty Hunter series, went up and down California. Saturday was flat track, Sunday was motocross, and we stayed and we watched the motocross, and I rode a little motocross on two wheelers too, and he liked that better. <laughs> he, he would rather watch that. And, uh, race flat track on the PW50 because it was too small to ride motocross. After maybe, I think probably, about six months racing the flat track stuff on the on the PW, uh, we kind of switched over. He started racing some motocross, and then just you know it goes from there. Off season, I separated my shoulder in December, and then coming into this year, January, I break my pelvis the week of Oakland, and do that I, that killed me inside. I thought my season was over. I was like, oh, my pelvis is broke. And the doctor's like, dude, don't walk on it for a month. I was walking on it because I was like, I would not go to the doctor at first. I was like, no, it's fine, it's just muscle. Mike Brown was with my trainer and he's like, dude, you have to go to the doctor. Like, you I couldn't walk 10 foot without having to stop. And uh, I went to the doctor and they're like, yeah, it's broke. And I, I remember calling my parents, I'm like, well, this is done, like, I'm done. Like, and it's contract year, I was like, so I'm, I just wasted all this. Luckily, I got back fast. So I was two weeks, I was walking. I was doing everything I could with Eldon and Mike. And yeah, it was pretty, hard on me because I knew if I didn't make the first couple of rounds, like, dude, it wasn't gonna be good. For the first round, I was happy. I was like, I just wanted to do the 15 minute moto. I hadn't even done a 15 minute moto. So that was my goal. And I went there and got seventh and I was like, oh, all right. Styles Robertson was the man on the spot. What a start for Styles Robertson also. Now he is doing really, really well. He had to take a lot of time off in the off season yep. due to injuries. So his plan was to just get better each weekend. And after a bad race, it brings you down and all you're doing is hurting yourself more. But it's just, the, I guess, the want, the grit, like, you know, like you just, you know you're better than what you did. So it just, you know, it's almost like an insult to yourself in a way. This is kind of where I grew up riding, whether it was coming out here and, you know, like trail riding with my dad and, and a bunch of friends, or it was coming out and kind of just riding the rough natural train tracks. I'd say my best memory here is probably after a good rain, I was riding this track and it was like, actually it was fun that day because it had moisture and it was sick. And I remember pulling off the track and talking to my, my parents and seeing like legit 45 people on this little minute long track. And it was like the coolest thing ever, just everyone out having fun. I remember like going to the east side and he was scared to death to ride out there. Like he wouldn't want to ride out there. And he hated it because there was, you know, all he ever rode was tracks. So at, up to then and everything was, you know, everybody went the same way. And then out there, everything, it's chaos. You know, people were going everywhere. And I don't think he liked it. And that, that bugged me. Like I wanted him to enjoy that. And as he got older, the more, the older he got, the more he really enjoyed that. So that's what I know, I, I remember the most about the east side is how he hated going out there. We'd say, I'd say, hey, let's go ride the east side. And he'd be like, I don't like going out there, Dad. Let's go to the track. <laughs> and I'm like, I want to ride. Let's go out to the east side. Definitely were some miserable days out here riding the rough tracks, but now I wouldn't freaking, wouldn't change it for anything. Um, heck, I wish I could come out here and, and do it more often. It's just one of those things that, you know, I, in, in the moment sucks, but afterwards you realize how much fun and how much it, it, it taught you. And uh, yeah, I'll 
forever be grateful for this freaking place. And the path for success goes back to, honestly, my dad growing up. My dad had a mentality of, you know, you were cleaning the floor or you're riding a dirt bike. Try your hardest and you do your best. It's just how I was raised. No matter what, you do everything to the best of your ability. I remember when I was like 12 or 13, I'm winning, I don't need to do anything. I just need to ride my dirt bike. I don't need to train. What do you mean? Do push-ups and sit-ups. And my dad's like, all right, well, you think that? You're gonna go to your uncle's, you're gonna level this whole yard. He was uh, at a construction yard, and, and you know, the people, the workers didn't care. They trashed the yards, had to go clean it all up and fill up potholes. And he goes, that could be you every day if you don't wanna just work out for an hour. Like it's an hour of your day instead of eight hours or 12 hours. He goes, it's, you got it easy at the end of the day. It's only an hour. And I think that stuck with me at a young age. So I'd say that my success just came from knowing that always just put your best into it. Growing up, they're always with you. You know, they're, me and him were always together and, and then all of a sudden you're not needed anymore. So from a parent's point of view, it's hard, you know, and then, then he moves across country and we don't see him all the time. But if we were also lucky to, to do something that we all really love to do and enjoy to do, and, and uh, there's not very many people in this world that get to actually live out their dreams. And it takes a special breed for a 17 year old to move across the country and, and take care of themselves. I'm probably more proud about that than I am of where his success as a motocross is the man that he is. Daytona this year was uh, like just going to the race. I remember press day. I was riding, I was like, dude, I just feel good. Like obviously you do good somewhere and you kind of have that confidence and that pressure's off almost. So I remember after practice, free practice, I didn't even get a good lap and I was like, I'm fine. Like, I feel good. And I was like, I'm gonna pull a whole whole shot and just see what happens. Set to go, this is Daytona Supercross and the 250 main. How does it look at the start? Styles Robinson yet again, another blinding start. Styles Robertson, who has had a very rewarding second place ride here. Coming into 2022, he had an off season with some injuries, hoping to just kind of get the groove going and, and work into the season. But here he is on the brink of getting another second place finish. And for Styles Robertson, he is in the final year of his contract. So I have to imagine that this is a big one, not only for him, but for everybody who would be interested in his services. He is incredible at Daytona. It's a second career podium for Styles Robinson, and he is off. crazy offseason. I separated my shoulder, broke my pelvis. It's been like seven weeks now. So uh, yeah, I'm so happy. Just uh, got to give a big shout out to my team. The whole Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna team. My mom and dad have been uh, amazing uh, supporting me. Just everybody in my corner, everyone back home in Bakersfield. Uh, I'm sure they're happy. So uh, glad the Baker boy could do it. And uh, let's just try to keep going. up from a podium and then got eighth the next weekend. I remember the Monday we rode after Detroit and I was still in bad mood. I was like pissed off at the world. And Dean's like, dude, you have to like calm down. It's behind you, can't, can't control it. So I came to the track Tuesday, I'm happy. I'm like, all right, it's behind me, whatever. We got another week to go racing. And uh, it was raining Tuesday morning a little bit, sprinkling, like fourth lap of practice. There was this double, triple, hit it the lap before, perfect. Hit it that lap and didn't even come close. I guess I just got wheel spin and broke my hand at the base of my wrist. And yeah, it's 
it's been mentally hard on me because I go from you know the second to the eighth, so I'm obviously mad. I want to do better. I mean, in the back of your head, your contract and all that, you're thinking about. I call him from my mom again, and I was like, well, here we are again. And I honestly, this past week, because I mean, this was only last week, I kind of got into my head a little bit too much, like why me type vibe. But it can't be like that. You just gotta take it as it comes. There might have been, you know, something worse, or the injuries are hard to come through. What we put our body through, I don't really see a sport that's like it, to be honest with you. It's uh, pretty gnarly and grueling, but when you love it, you don't see it that way. Today, uh, first day back riding. Main goal was to see if I could ride next week. You know, get the outdoor prep started and underway. It sucks that my Supercross season had to come to an end, but keep trying to get better and, uh, you know, do therapy and do everything I can to be 100% for outdoors as well. That's good. So it didn't feel worse that time, just the same? Not bad. At least I know now it would be good for money. Maybe a little ice, a little whatever, you know, a little therapy and then, you know, we're not trying to fix a bunch of things right now. We're just look, like looking at ideas, you know? When you have this moment of an injury, you just like, you know, are mad. So when I came back, it just like relit the fire almost. It makes you realize why you did it. It was just kind of weird. I had this weird gut feeling about that day. It's just crazy how fast it can all happen. the tough part is trying to get those demons out your head of negative thoughts and flashbacks of bad things that have happened to you. 